components of the ecosystem all organisms interact with each other and no biotic community can live in isolation the environment supplies material and energy requirements and provides living conditions to an organism community a biological community interacting with the non-living environment is called an ecosystem an ecosystem can be natural or artificial, temporary or permanent. A pond, a coral reef, a grassland, a village, an aquarium can all be regarded as ecosystems. Thus, an ecosystem may be defined as a dynamic system which includes both organisms, biotic component and abiotic environment influencing the properties of each other and both necessary for the maintenance of life. The ecosystem concept was first put forth by Sir Arthur Tansley in 1935. Ecosystems can be recognized as self-regulating and self-sustaining units of landscape. In nature, two major categories of ecosystems may be distinguished. Terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Forests, grasslands and deserts are main examples of terrestrial ecosystems, while ponds, lakes, streams or salt water, marine estuaries represent aquatic ecosystems. All the ecosystems of the earth are connected to one another. Example, river ecosystem is connected with the ecosystem of oceans and the small ecosystem of dead logs is a part of a large ecosystem of a forest. However, human activities may modify natural ecosystems into man-made or anthropogenic ecosystems. For example, natural forests have been cut and the land converted to tree plantations or agricultural systems. The living organisms, that is, biotic components and the non-living parts, that is, abiotic components of an ecosystem are very closely interconnected. Let us learn them one by one. All organisms require energy for their life processes and this energy is produced through the process of photosynthesis carried on by green plants. The green plants are called producers. Producers are autotrophic, that is, self-nourishing. A variety of photosynthetic bacteria Chemosynthetic bacteria and photosynthetic protozoans also produce organic substances in terrestrial and aquatic habitats in very small amounts. In terrestrial ecosystems, the autotrophs are usually rooted plants such as herbs, shrubs and trees, while in deep aquatic ecosystems, floating plants called phytoplanktons are the major autotrophs. The dominant producers of shallow water are called macrophytes, which are generally rooted plants. All other populations in a community are dependent upon green plants and are referred to as consumers. Consumers are also known as phagotrophs. Phagotrophs are the heterotrophic organisms, mostly animals, which generally ingest or swallow their food. There are different categories of consumers. The first category is primary consumers, which are herbivorous animals and are dependent for their food on producers or green plants. Insects, rabbit, deer, cow, buffalo, goat are the primary consumers. The herbivores serve as the chief food source for carnivores. Secondary consumers are carnivores and are flesh-eating animals that are adapted to consume herbivores. 
fox, wolves, cats, snakes are some examples of secondary consumers. Tertiary consumers are the top carnivores which prey upon other carnivores and herbivores. Lion, tiger, hawk, vulture, etc. are known as tertiary consumers. Besides different categories of consumers, the parasites, scavengers and saprobes are also included among consumers. The parasites utilize the living tissues of different plants and animals as their food, while the scavengers and saprobes utilize dead remains of animals and plants as their food. Fungi and some bacteria, which are incapable of producing their food, live on dead and decaying plants or animal parts and are consumers of a special kind called decomposers or saprotrophs. Saprotrophs simplify step by step the organic constituents of each dead body. The extracellular digestion of the dead remains leads to the release of simpler inorganic substances which are then used as food. Apart from the biotic community, the ecosystem also constitutes of the abiotic or the non-living components. Among the abiotic factors, the most important are climatic and edific factors. The climatic factors consist of temperature, humidity, rain and snowfall and the edific factors comprise the soil and substratum. Let's take a look on these abiotic factors. A certain temperature is essential for all the vital functions and the growth of the living organisms. All living organisms can survive only in a narrow range of temperature which allows their metabolism. For instance, plants normally prefer a temperature varying from 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. However, many living organisms develop physiological and behavioral adaptations to withstand extremes of temperature. For example, the polar bear can live in very cold regions and hibernates during winter. Some birds and mammals migrate to warmer places in winter to avoid extreme cold. Some desert animals live inside burrows to avoid the intense heat of the desert. Without water, life cannot exist. The unique chemical properties of water make it the supporter and carrier of life and all biological activities depend on it. Water may evaporate into the atmosphere or it may precipitate from the atmosphere as rain or snow. It may be taken up by plant roots and become part of plant tissue or may be frozen into a glacier or run off the land to meet the ocean. This movement of water throughout the biosphere is called the hydrologic cycle. Plants in relation to the factor of water are divided into three groups. Hydrophytes, mesophytes and xerophytes. Hydrophytes are adapted to extremely wet situations. The leaves of such plants are fine and thin and possess little cutin. Mesophytes are plants adapted to inhabit regions with a moderate water supply. Example, cultivated crops, garden vegetables, trees, ferns and mosses. Xerophytes are plants adapted to inhabit in arid or semi-arid regions such as cactus, yucca, etc. Whether an animal lives in the water or on land, the water balance in its body must be maintained. 
the amphibians and earthworms always live in a moist environment. Most animals obtain water by drinking. Many animals get most of the water they need from their food. The animals which cannot actively swim live under stones or in burrows and crevices to avoid the strong water currents. The plants found in fast flowing water possess finely divided or thin ribbon shaped leaves. Sea anemones and limpets living in the intertidal zone of sea have sessile habit whereas nereus and sun tube worms live in the burrows in soil. The seaweeds such as fucus, laminaria, macrocystis and nereocystis are found in attached condition to face the waves and water currents. The humidity of the atmosphere directly regulates the rate of transpiration and perspiration from the plants and animals respectively. Various plants and animals develop several adaptations to face dry conditions. Light is also an essential abiotic factor for photosynthetic organisms for the preparation of food on which the whole living world depends. The reproductive cycle of many species of plants is affected by the duration of light or length of day. The response of plants to day length is called photoperiodism. Photoreceptors for light are found in various animal groups. These photoreceptors, such as the pigment spots of many invertebrates, play a prominent role in the procurement of food, the avoidance of enemies, and the recognition of mates during the breeding season. Animals such as true frogs and chameleons have the ability to change their color. They do so by photic stimulation through the eyes. Relative lengths of day and night make an important factor in periodical animal migration. Some animals such as the deer mate in autumn when the days are short. Some animals are active only at dawn. Others are active through the morning hours, while some are active only during the brightest hours of the day. At night, diurnal forms withdraw from the scene and nocturnal animals become active. Many nocturnal animals have eyes specialized for nocturnal vision. The leaves of many leguminous plants fold up or droop at night. Another abiotic factor, that is air gusts or wind, affects the plants in several ways. It enhances transpiration. Some plants can resist the action of wind far better than others. Coconut palms can withstand wind well because their leaves are cut into narrow segments with stout midrib. Where the wind gusts are quite strong, only the plants with tough roots and stems can survive. Wind is useful in disseminating seeds and fruits. The living organisms require an optimal pH range for their survival. Certain plants and animals thrive best in acidic conditions. Other prefer neutral or alkaline conditions. pH of the soil and water is responsible to a great extent for the distribution of organisms. Soil is defined as mineral material that may exist in solid or unbroken form such as boulders and gravels or as finely divided particles of mineral matter referred to as sands, silts or clays depending upon the texture. A soil is described as a complex physical and biological system providing support, water, nutrient and oxygen for the plant. Thank <laughs> you.
The major elements present in the soil are aluminium, silicon, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium and iron, while the minor elements are cobalt, boron, iodine, zinc, arsenic, etc. The availability of essential minerals controls the distribution of all living organisms. Plants found in nitrogen deficient soil develop special adaptations to obtain nitrogen such as nitrogen fixing bacteria and the insectivorous habit of plants. The salinity of soil or water has great influence on the distribution of organisms. Special salt secreting glands develop in plants and animals to eliminate excessive salt. Animals living in the estuaries near the seashore have special physiological adaptations for facing fluctuations in salinity accompanying tidal rhythms. The pneumatophores and viviparae are special adaptations in the mangrove vegetation. The topography of an area is represented by physical features such as hills, plains or slopes. It influences distribution of organisms in the direct way. For example, the center and edge of a pond top side or underside of a rock or boulder are generally occupied by different species of organisms. Sometimes the topography indirectly affects the factors such as wind, water current and light. The background of the habitat is responsible for the distribution of animals by enabling them to paint against the color, pattern and general texture. For example, desert animals like lion and the camel are sand colored. The jellyfish and sea cucumbers are glossy in appearance, while the chameleon changes its color according to its background. To conclude, we can say that an ecosystem is incomplete in the absence of either of its two interdependent components, biotic as well as abiotic, that comprise of all living as well as non-living forms on the planet.